Good morning and welcome. My name is uh, Sebastian Casternan. I am uh, an offering manager with the company Honeywell. And uh, my focus is on refrigeration, commercial refrigeration. And I would like to, to show you today um, how our solstice solutions uh, do preserve energy and maximize the bottom line for end users in, in retail refrigeration. What retailers do expect from their refrigeration assets? I think this is where we need to start with. Um, margin control, this is extremely important for end users in retail. Uh, margin control has a lot, of to, a lot to do with costs, obviously, as you see here low capex when they want to, to implement projects, uh, electricity costs, uh, maintenance costs uh, driven by, sorry, energy efficiency driving electricity costs obviously and the maintenance costs. Margin control is of course also about the um, maximization of the revenue related to reliability of, of the assets. Uh, uh, the reliability leads to um, the maximization of the life of the refrigerated products. Um, to, uh, of course, having the, 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 I would say, the highest uptime possible, and that improves consumer experience. The third point are, of course, the sustainability targets that retailers need to reach along with, with conducting their business every day. So sustainability targets is related to uh, regulatory compliance on the one side, but of course to um, net zero, becoming net zero as quickly as possible at the lowest possible cost, the safety and the emissions, the total emissions that, uh, that, that you generate with, with your operation. All in all, uh, refrigeration is something that end users do not actually want to bother about every day, but this is something which is critical to their bottom line. So how can retailers manage in an optimal way their refrigeration assets? As we all know, retailers have a set of assets. They have a portfolio of assets, different sizes, but also different ages. If I start with the aspect of age, or I would say, uh, yeah, how old is the asset or so the, the, the store? We know that most of the, or the portfolio is actually made out of assets which are between zero to 10 years. These assets are not old enough to be replaced. There is no need for that. So a way to go through regulatory constraints, but also to improve the energy efficiency using the same system is to retrofit the system. So to change the refrigerant in the same system, you keep the asset, you operate it further, um, as long as, I mean, you can basically, so you maximize the uptime, you minimize the disruptions and uh, you uh, extend the, sorry, the, you, uh, you can really uh, basically uh, minimize the, the new investments for, of course, your activity in terms of new construction. Uh, it's usually 10 to 20% of the portfolio, which is being rebuilt or remodeled every year. Uh, we know that in the meantime, most of the activity is on remodeling existing stores and not building greenfield stores. Um, with the development of the different channels of distribution, uh, we see more and more stores being converted to warehouse uh, for the, uh, for the ful fulfillment of, of the last mile, so to say. And for these assets, so for this uh, new construction of stores or new construction activity, uh, retailers want to minimize the capex, obviously, if possible, to reuse as much, as many components and as much equipment as possible. Uh, and of course, they want to go to a technology which ensure they uh, generate the minimum opex. Uh, uh, the low, I would say the, the, the strongest part being the, the energy uh, consumption and making sure that the assets will run reliably. So for that, retailers choose new assets. Uh, uh, and they need to make a decision on the technology which they go to. Uh, this needs to support the reliability, needs to make sure that they use as, uh, as, as a, I mean, that the consumption of energy is as low as possible and that they uh, minimize the capex when implementing these, these projects. So the assets require specific solutions based on their age, based on their format. Uh, and that brings me to the uh, topic of formats. Um, 
in the sense that uh, uh, the age is one consideration. The other consideration is how, I would say, how big is your store, how small it is. And definitely uh, at Honeywell, we have tried to uh, structure our offering in a way which makes it clear and simple to make decisions around the, 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 the long-term technology. If you have a small store, a convenience store, a corner store, if you have, uh, I would say, a medium-sized store going up to 1,500, 2,000 square meter, we believe that 455A is the right refrigerant solution. Of course, embedded in the right system, embedded in the right architecture, you see here some examples uh, of, of architecture and system type of systems that we recommend. Uh, um, I'll go a bit deeper into that later on when I will talk about our new refrigerant. But definitely we think that this solution 455A is the optimal one for the stores up to 1,500, 2,000 square meter. This product is actually a proven solution. We have launched that several years ago. In the meantime, uh, it is available in most uh, I would say types of systems. The components are ready for that. Um, this year, going through the show, I think there is uh, hardly a booth where you don't see, uh, I would say, a solution for what we say A2L refrigerants. But actually, in this case, we talk about 455A. Um, we find this refrigerant, I mean, these solutions in uh, butcheries, bakeries, groceries, food service, convenience stores, larger stores up to 2,500 square meter, as I will show you in a minute, but also in warehouses and so on. So it is a, a refrigerant which does exactly the same as 404A, exactly the same as 448A, low temperature, medium temperature, a high critical temperature, which allows for heating, uh, applications, so heat recovery and uh, and also yeah, uh, heating applications which uh, on which we are engaging developments on. It has a high COP, so basically this refrigerant is a long-term solution and helps you save energy even more than, than 404A, if you still notice this refrigerant. A couple of references. We have many references. I just stick to the references in food retail uh, in Europe. So uh, I have an example from UK, a very small store, 280 square meter. An example from Spain, 1,200 square meter. And the larger one is uh, the delays in Belgium, 1,600 square meter. I mean, some of them are on condensing units. Uh, some of them are on packs. Uh, uh, and some of them, like the Edeka reference, is on a water loop system. Um, Basically, all these systems, and, and, and you will see that in our, in our collaterals, in our presentations, we always work together with the retailer to develop with them what we call an eco-efficiency simulation, an eco-efficiency evaluation of the alternatives. Eco-efficiency evaluation being how more economical is that for them to go to this, in this direction, and how more environmentally friendly is that for them in terms of total emissions. Now I have an example on uh, heat recovery, a, a case study actually, heat recovery, it's so this 455A. We know that some alternative technologies boast the, their capability to, to recover the heat. Um, it's not that HFO technologies cannot recover the heat. On the contrary, we can do that even more efficiently than, than the alternatives. Here an example from London. It's a, a store of 1,000 square meter. You see here the, the capacity, the heating needs. Um, um, and uh, basically, we have made a simulation based on 15 years of, of life cycle. The heat recovery scenario in which I think you see we have taken into account all uh, influences or all, uh, I would say influencing factors. The heat recovery scenario provides for the fact that we cover in the first place the heats of hot water, hot water. And when the heats for hot water, the needs, sorry, for hot water are uh, fulfilled, then we go to fulfilling the need for, for heating. If you look at, at the results, um, you see the electricity consumption without heat recovery. Sorry, I may want to, need to use that. Yeah. The, the, the consumption without the heat recovery. Uh, 
here basically are the heating needs without heat recovery. And after, I mean, or with the heat recovery uh, functionality, basically we cover, sorry, we cover 100% of the hot water. This is here below. This is what we do first. And then we cover the heating needs and we cover them up to 40%. So 40% is actually the average over a year or over the life cycle. Uh, if you uh, take the, the average over the, the conditions for the full year. Here you can actually see, if you look at the ambient the temperature, I think naturally, the higher the ambient temperature, the higher the coverage of the heating needs. So this is just the heating part. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, about 15 degrees Celsius, we cover the, the, the full demand for heating. Um, but I think when you see this order of magnitude of 40%, this is very comparable with, uh, with the alternative technologies. Uh, and we do that at a, at, without compromising the COP of the, of the main system. Just to introduce now the next part, uh, which is about the Solstice N71, which is uh, the solution that we uh, believe uh, is the one to go for larger stores, larger formats. So uh, I'll make a snapshot on N71, 471A. This is a refrigerant that we are uh, developing, that we are uh, about to commercialize uh, very soon. And um, just to give you a feel of, of what it is, uh, it is a, a refrigerant with GWP below 150. We do not launch new solutions anymore with a GWP above 150. That is, uh, that is absolutely uh, a must. It is an A1 refrigerant, so that, of course, gives the flexibility to use uh, the charge you need without uh, limits in terms of flammability. And also, it allows the same handling and the same, uh, uh, basically, uh, storage and transportation um, conditions as for all the other A1 refrigerants. It's a high efficiency refrigerant. So uh, high efficiency means really for, for a retailer, a lower energy, energy consumption, uh, efficiency similar to 134A and higher than 4,4A, higher than CO2, uh, thermodynam thermodynamically between 20 and 30%. You will see uh, in the next, in one of the next slides, uh, an analysis on the full system. It's a low pressure refrigerant, which of course minimizes the risk of leaks. Uh, and the, the system technology similar to 134A allows that, uh, I mean, your the, the, the usual portfolio of the contractors can, can deal with that and, and handle that safely. In terms of properties, uh, you see it's a blend. It's a blend uh, made out of mainly 1234ZE, a bit of 1336MZZE and 227EA. Um, important for retailers is that it's an A1. I think that's, uh, that's a key. Um, uh, 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 I would say a key uh, feature uh, for larger um, larger formats. Uh, GWP just below 150, uh, a critical temperature which is pretty high. If you look at the boiling point, uh, and this is an important part to, to cover, minus 17, this is a refrigerant for medium temperature applications. This is not covering low temperature, so it is not a replacement for 455A, which I've presented just before. It is a, a complement. It is a, a, a refrigerant which has, a, I would say, a, a play in the larger format, typically about 40 kilowatts, uh, when you are looking for a solution for medium temperature. We are ready for store trials. So this product, as I said, is still in development, but it's available for sampling and for pilot trials in stores. We are on track to commercialize, and uh, for the moment, we are also in cooperation with end users, qualifying this refrigerant with component manufacturers. Uh, but I can tell you that we are already implementing store trials. A couple of examples of architectures. Uh, um, where, I mean, how we see this refrigerant being used. Direct expansion, pretty easy. Medium temperature centralized rack system. For low temperature, you can use condensing units with a, a refrigerant like 455A. You can use plugins, um, self contained systems. An alternative also to, to uh, improve the efficiency and maybe. Um, allow to optimize a system for uh, uh, operating conditions which are more stable over the year is to uh, implement a micro cascade system 
uh, at the low temperature side. Um, so the, 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 the self-contained or the distributed systems would uh, reject the heat to the, the medium temperature circuit. And uh, this is what I announced. I mean, we have, I've shown you the, the ter thermodynamic properties of this uh, refrigerant versus CO2. Here is an eco-efficiency simulation. So that is actually a simulation on the whole system. Uh, in the first case, about a 2,000 square meter store. You see basically the capex, you see the opex covering electricity and service, electricity being the main part for 90%. Uh, total cost of ownership, which is the sum of them. And uh, here, the part on energy consumption, of course, influencing the OPEX massively, but also influencing the total emissions. You see here a difference in emission, which is a, a third of a million kilowatt hours. Um, I mean, based on very conservative uh, evaluation, you have a difference in total cost of ownership of 240,000 euro. This is for a 2,000 square meter store. If you look at it for 8,000 square meter store, you're above a million and you're above, sorry, a million euro difference between the solutions in terms of TCO and you're above 2 million of kilowatt hours difference, lower consumption um, for uh, in favor of, uh, of 471A or N71. So, um, what are the further developments around this product? I, I seem to be a bit under pressure from a time perspective, so I will not spend a lot of time on that, but I encourage you to speak with us and to come to our booth or to ask us questions after, after the presentation. Uh, one direction we are, um, we are uh, I would say, working on is a deep subcooling. Deep subcooling is actually uh, a way for us to increase significantly, I would even say massively, the capacity of the uh, main system and its COP as well. You can see the orders of magnitude here. Uh, we can increase, of course, it's a dedicated subcooling system, increase the capacity by up to 64% and the COP by 10 to 30%. So even if that's, a, 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 I would say, a, a pressure for low, um, sorry, a, a refrigerant with, uh, I would say, for, for medium temperature, this increase, the potential, the potential increase of capacity allows us to really um, develop very interesting new concepts. It is also an additional opportunity to reuse the heat and to uh, produce uh, typically hot water at a higher COP than the main system. The other direction we are looking into is the, the low capex remodelings, because as I said, most of the activity is on remodeling of existing stores. We believe that this refrigerant has the potential to develop concepts so that retailers can reuse uh, most of the equipment, can reuse that piping. I can't say more at this stage, but uh, as you say here, we are looking to indirect systems uh, using plug and play uh, uh, concepts, uh, uh, which would cover refrigeration, hot water, HVAC, and so on. And of course, uh, reuse most of the, of the equipment which can be used in an existing store. As a conclusion, why would a retailer use solstice refrigerants and solstice engineer refrigerant in, 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 their, in their assets? First of all, energy preservation. It's all about the, the need for energy. I mean, how much energy you need in the first place. And of course, what you can reuse in terms of, of heat recovery. I think I've, I've shown you that it is, uh, it is something that, uh, that we are by no means behind. Um, we see the development of alternative models, alternative financial models, cooling as a service, uh, cooling as a, as a cooling on demand, and definitely uh, there the technologies which are, which are most efficient will win. Cost minimization, so the capex typically reusing what you can in terms of components, and the opex, uh, low energy consumption, but also the lowest possible maintenance costs. And revenue ma maximization driven by the reliability, definitely the uptime, the safety, and uh, uh, yeah, the features that you that you see here. Uh, we minimize the risk of failure. We minimize the time that you need to remodel the store. And the last question that I would raise is: It's critical to use resilient technologies. What happens in case of power outage? I think this is something that we will have to face in the next couple of months and years. So yeah, speak with us. 
mm, we are here, we are available for questions, or come to our booth 60624. Thank you. <laughs>